What's up guys, Shane here from Fugitech 3D Printing and today I'm going to show you how to 3D print your own LED streaming light. Welcome back guys. So in this crazy time that we're in right now, everyone's looking for some type of project to do. And I have just the project if you're deciding to get into streaming. I'm getting back into streaming, I haven't done it in quite a long time, and I'm noticing that in my setup, I've got quite the dark area because I'm actually behind, right now I'm in front of my studio lights, but when I stream, I'm behind the studio lights and I'm not getting any of that light on my face. And ordering non-essentials right now really isn't a thing. You know, you're ordering things that you actually need, medicines, toilet paper, things like that, food. You're not gonna be ordering a streaming light, and also everyone's trying to save money. This costs a few dollars, if that, especially if you already have the things in-house. I literally bought nothing for this specifically. I just grabbed what I had in my shop to be able to create this. Not everyone can do that, I understand, but for very, very little money, you can create something just like this, and you'll have extra things left over from the project to be able to use for other other project, you know, you never know what you can have. So it's good to have a few things hanging around. Now, what exactly is this is an LED streaming light. It has a bunch of LED strips inside of it. It comes down to a DC power jack. I then have a 12 volt AC wall jack that I can plug into it and I get light from it. That whew. it is bright. It probably is being crazy. I mean, it is brighter than my soft boxes to be honest. I mean, it is probably too many LEDs in there. So yeah, I'm gonna show you guys real quick now in Fusion 360 how you can make this. This literally takes maybe five or six minutes to make. Very, very simple to do. This is actually my version one. Version two is what I'm gonna show you in Fusion and I'll kinda of come back right afterwards and show you what it looks like inside. All right, we are back in Fusion 360 and here you can see my completed light design. Now I'm just going to go ahead and just wind back the timeline here and we'll show you exactly how I was able to create this little object here. So very first step is to create a sketch and this is my original sketch. I decided to make this 180 by 180 millimeters. You can pick literally any size you want. I would just suggest is to measure how long each segment of LEDs is figure out how many of those segments you want to put in it, then add a little bit of space on each side for the wires, because you have to run this in a series. And then you also want to add on an extra few millimeters for the actual exterior size of the box. I went with five millimeters, a little bit too big, but hey, it's okay, uh, it's very sturdy, I can say that. So I made my square here, and then I offset, uh, you can just hit O and then pick whatever one you want and just create an offset. I create an offset uh, five millimeters in from that out exterior 180. And then I got that completed. So the next step was to extrude my walls. And I went ahead and made these 30 millimeters deep. I didn't want the, the LEDs to be too close to the front of the panel because it is only one printed layer I was afraid it was going to melt it. So I figured it's going to be about 30 millimeters away, a little less than like 30, maybe like 28, 27 millimeters. Either way, I figured that was a good distance. I will tell you this thing does get hot. So maybe having a little bit further away might be a better option, but you know, experiment, see what happens. All right. Up next was to extrude the actual front of the LED panel. So this is your diffuser basically. And this is 0.2 millimeters. I mean, this is one layer height, very, very thin. You need to have a really good first layer in order to have this looking really good. Again, 0.2 millimeters. I did an actual test of different thicknesses, 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and 0.8. And anything higher was just too diffused. It was just too opaque. So I had to go with just the single 0.2 millimeter layer. So as you can see, it's now there, very, very thin. All right, next up was to just, you know, fill up the edges a little bit, make it not so square and not nice looking. So added a little bit of a fillet to that. All right, next up was another sketch. So I created this sketch at the top of this right here. So basically it's offset, basically 30 millimeters from the origin plane, the new plane is up here. So I went ahead and created this sketch and this sketch is literally just the inside there. And then I created that, added the fillet to it and that was done. So I created that sketch, I extruded it 
and I made this back panel five millimeter stick. Now this is actually what your LEDs are going to attach to on the inside. So if I hide this body here, if I go and I hide body one, you can see that that is our just straight up five mil thick piece of plastic. Now, the one thing I will say is that when I did this extrude here, this was extruded, if you look over here, as a new body. You don't want to have it as joined because then that just makes the first one that much bigger. This has to be two halves, so you can put your LEDs on it and then place the faceplate on it. There are a hundred ways to do this, but I found this to be the easiest for me. Uh, you could have easily printed this, you know, halfway, so 15 millimeters for one half, 15 millimeters for the other half. I didn't want that, and again, this was just the easiest way for me to get that done. And after that, I created another sketch on the first body right down here. And this is just a hole that is big enough for my power plug to fit through. I am using a 12 volt, uh, basically just wall wart to power these LEDs. And I measured it and this hole is big enough. And this hole is, let me double check on here. How big did I make this hole? D for dimensions, that's 10 millimeters. So that is big enough for my power to fit into it. After we create that sketch, we're going to go ahead and extrude that hole through. So now there is a hole in this base uh, body. All right, next up is, we're going to get a little fancy here. We're going to go ahead and create a sketch here on the bottom. Now, this is going to be how we're going to attach it to some type of clamp or something in order to hold this in the air. It's not these other sketches. And I'm going to go ahead and extrude that out. I extruded mine by 25 millimeters just to give a good little base there. I created a sketch on top of that, which is here. And then I extruded that down two millimeters to kind of give this little kind of grippy. And then I did that again for the backside. So basically this would be if you have some type of clamp that's going to clamp on it here. It has, you know, something to grip on, basically. Is this really necessary? No, but I figured, you know, just in case my stand needed something a little extra to grip on, I did this. You could definitely make this thinner. That way, the top of your clamp being the middle, the middle of your clamp would be grabbing on the bottom of this eye shape. But, you know, it all depends on your mounting on how you're going to have it. The last step I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a fillet on here. So I want to have more contact area to be able to support the light, it is very lightweight, but this does give you a little bit extra support to it so that it's not gonna break off. And the very last one was a chamfer on here. Now this is to make it so this doesn't need support because this piece prints on its face like this. So your first layer is your diffuser basically. And then in order to reduce having support, you can just have this bridge. It's not particularly important that it's that beautiful, we're doing this for functionality. We're not doing this for a beauty piece. And again, it would be nice to have this more in the middle because the weight is more in the back. But uh, again, to avoid having any support, this was the route that I took. You could do this differently, but that's just how I wanted it. And then now we have, so if I spin around this front way, this is where your light's gonna come through, your back panel, and how you're gonna hook it up to some type of mounting and your hole for your power. And that's how simple it is to design your own LED light. Now holding mine together right now is a bit of gaffer's tape because I wanted to make this video and I also did not want to glue this shut just in case I needed to fix the LED problem or if I had a wiring problem. I wanted to make sure that everything was okay in it and it's just so simple to do. And gaffer's tape is probably the most amazing thing in the world. I highly recommend picking up a few rolls of it. I have a bunch of these neon colors. My kids like it. And it really has helped out in like more ways than you can ever imagine to have a good sticking tape, but yet it comes off pretty easily and doesn't leave a big residue behind. So let me show you how I wired these up now. So here you can see I have all of my LEDs. Now these are wired in series. So I have the beginning of my strand here connected to the power and the very end of it down here. This is honestly way too many LEDs for this. I just packed in as much as I could in this 180 millimeter cube. I definitely should have gone with less. It doesn't also need to be this bright, but hey, you live and you learn. I can come back and take out a few of these strips, just, you know, so re-solder them together and it would work out just fine. But again, I was looking for very, very simple and just easy to do. And again, all I did was you put down a strip. These are actually three of them together. I have a little bit of space on either side so that I can have my loops. It loops to the next row and goes down, down, and down 
Very, very simple to do. You could just bend your LEDs around, but I don't like that. Uh, you kind of waste some of the LEDs. So cutting them and a little bit of jumper cables, solder those on and it's done. It goes all the way down to this wire, which has a DC jack. I have a whole bag of these, cost a few dollars on AliExpress and it just screws right on there and you can add any DC wall jack straight to it. How simple is that? Just that quickly within, let's say, about 10 minutes to model it and a few hours to print it, to solder the LEDs and then put them in there. A few hours later, you have yourself a streaming light and you can be live streaming during these times, finding something else to do, play some video games with some friends, or just do what I do, hang out on every Saturday night with a bunch of 3D printing nerds and see what's going on in the world or whatever I'm working on. And again, it's a way to interact with people and it also makes yourself a little more presentable and it raises your streaming bar just a little bit more. My setup is not crazy and I want to buy an actual streaming light at some point, but this will get me by right now until I get something better. And that is kind of how it is. You have to start somewhere in order to get better and why not for just a few dollars make yourself your own streaming light before you go out and buy those hundred dollar a piece Elgato streaming lights which are stupid expensive and I'm not buying those but anyways you understand what I mean here all right now to give you a quick real world test this is how I've been streaming the past few weeks you can see my office behind me messy and things going on as usual but you can see I'm pretty dark up here is where my streaming lights are and they're on right now computer turn off the office. This is with nothing, so just the glow of my screen. Actually, kind of a dark look. Interesting. Computer, turn on the office. I'll get that back on, you can see there is no light coming from the front of me. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in now. And there we have it. That is a stark difference once the camera kind of catches up here. And you can see I am a little harsh on this side, but fairly full. There's a lot more lighting coming towards me. Uh, because right now it is bouncing off the wall and at me. Probably about about 45 degree angle, 50 degree angle from the wall to me. Now if I turn this, now this is straight at me here. That is very, very harsh lighting on one side. Not very good at all. So I'm going to keep this kind of turned a little bit right there. And that looks pretty good to me. So as you can see, not too bad. Desperate times call for desperate measures. You make with what you can and this definitely is going to improve my future streams. And this isn't what I'm going to keep forever. I will eventually buy streaming lights, but for now, it'll do just fine. Hope you guys enjoyed this fun little project. I hope you enjoyed the Fusion 360 tutorial and just to show you that you should not be afraid of modeling something in 3D. It's very simple to do once you understand a few of the key aspects to it. And I hope these videos help you out. If you want to see more of these kind of more tutorial, little project type videos, let me know. I literally model something at least once or twice a week for around the house. All the time I'm making something or fixing something in the house. I am happy to share those with you if the interest is there. So please let me know down in the comments if you want to see more of that. And before I go, I will make sure that I put a link to my actual Fusion 360 project file for this down in the video description. You can go ahead and download that, edit in Fusion 360, make it as wide as you want, as tall as you want, as small, change up the walls, anything you want, or follow my tutorial and make one yourself to whatever specification you wanna make it to. And that's gonna wrap it up, guys. So thank you for tuning in. If you wanna stay in tune with what's going on, make sure you become a subscriber. Hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to get yourself some notifications when I upload new content or I do my live streams on Saturday nights. Make sure you tune in. If you to help me out financially to, to build new projects, build 3D printers, create new content, you can become a patron. Only takes a dollar, head down to the link down below and tune in to there. I do after shows, hangouts with the patrons, Make sure you check that out. I said that once already. But anyways, how you can help out there's some one-time donation links, buy me a coffee or Streamlabs, and there's a bunch of fill links and some coupon codes down there. Save yourself some money. And whenever you shop with those, a little slice of that comes my way. And again, I pour everything back into my channel to help buy new things, whether it's camera equipment or printers or anything that I use. It really does help out. So I thank you guys for tuning in. And until next time, happy printing.